let's look at these phase diagrams. Here they are. All right. So in a phase diagram, um, essentially, it's uh, a plot between um, pressure and temperature. Pressure and temperature. And as we know, you can take a system and you can change the pressure and you can change the temperature of that system. Change the pressure and temperature of that system and it will change between a solid, liquid, or gas. All right. So I'm going to ask Robert. This question is for you. Okay. So um, what is the phase of a compound? Solid, liquid, or gas are the answers here, right? Solid, liquid, or gas. One of those answers. What is the phase of a compound when the temperature is really low and the pressure is really high? What do you think, Robert? So it's going to be a solid. That's right. So when the temperature is low and the pressure is high, then you have a solid. Sarah, what do you think the phase would be? And again, answer is solid, liquid, or gas when the pressure is really low and the temperature is really high. Looks like it'll be a gas. A gas, that's right, gas. And when we have a high temperature, but we increase the pressure enough, then we can force that gas into the form of a liquid, okay? So in this region over here where you have low pressures, high temperatures, it's a gas. Over here, high pressures, low temperature, it's a solid. And then there's these boundaries where the transition between either a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas or a solid to a gas can occur. All right. And these phase diagrams allow us to kind of um, understand why, for example, something like dry ice at room temperature uh, does not melt to a liquid, but it um, sublimes from a solid directly to a gas, okay? Um, so the most tricky part about these phase diagrams is the thing that we just did, the thing that we just did. Given a, a phase diagram, again, something like this, They'll tell us pressure and temperature like that, but they won't, and, and they'll usually give us something like that, but they won't tell us what these different um, phases are. But we just have to take a breath, hold still, and think. If the pressure is really high and the temperature is really low, what would we have, all right? And once we can kind of go through the process, Liquid is probably the more difficult one to think about, but very low pressure, high temperature, that's got to be a gas, right? Um, and so that'll, out of process of illumination, if you get stuck, you can identify liquid, okay? After you have that, then you can easily identify that sort of a transition. So if I label this transition, transition A, David, what do we call that transition, that phase change when we go from a liquid to a solid? Oh, uh, Camille, Camille, what do we call that? When we go from a liquid to a solid, Camille. Uh, is it solidification? All right, that's good. Uh, um, freezing, um, fusion, those are some other words. Very good. Uh, let's see, Alyssa, what do we call it when we go from, I'm gonna try to get tricky here. Uh, well, I don't know. You know what you call it when you go gas to solid? Remember that one, Camille? Oh no, sorry, it's Alyssa's turn, Alyssa. Or we could go solid to gas. Do you know that one, Alyssa? You wanna help us out, Brielle? Do you know either of these? This is, let's say C and this is D. I know that going to from solid to gas, it's sublimation. All right, sublimation. All right, and going from gas to solid is called deposition. All right, very good. 
And that's just about the trickiest part of these phase diagrams. They're pretty straightforward other than that. Um, we have a triple point here, which is, you know, kind of interesting. If you're at that point, you can have in equilibrium, like we talked about before, some solid, liquid, and gas. Okay. Um, mm, let's see. Here we go. Uh, that's our triple point, right? Um, so if we look at the phase diagram for water, for example, and water has some values that we're aware of, uh, here's a, a tricky question for you, Jace. You ready for this one? What's the boiling point of water? What's the boiling point of water, Jace? 100 degrees Celsius. Oh, so close, so close. Why did we say that we can't say 100 degrees Celsius when we're asked what the boiling point of water is, Jace? Do you remember last class? Yeah, it's dependent on elevation. That's so right. Like so when somebody asks you what's the boiling point of water, what you need to ask is what instead from now on? At what elevation? At what pressure? At what pressure? pressure what atmosphere yeah. pressure? Yes. That's right. That's kind of a trick question. But yes, at at and we can see that here as well. Which so here's our green section, Jace, kind of a blue line here and a pink line here or reddish line. What is it? Green, red, or blue? Which one kind of follows the uh, the boiling point? the boiling line, Jace. Which one would be our boiling line? I would say like the red one. That's right, because it's going from liquid to gas, liquid to gas. So if we had a constant temperature, sorry, pressure over here on the left, constant pressure, one atmosphere, let's say, and here we are, this transition going from liquid to gas should occur at what temperature, Taiwan, if we're at one atmosphere for water, our transition from liquid to gas, what temperature should that occur at, Taiwan? One hundred Celsius degree. That's right, a hundred degrees Celsius. And we can see that that's the case. Here it is, crossing that yellow line right there, occurs right about a hundred degrees Celsius. But you can see as you get more pressure, changing the pressure, then the temperature at which our uh, um, transition occurs raises if we go higher in pressure, whereas if we go lower in pressure, that temperature at which the transition, the boiling point, will go from liquid to gas decreases, right? And we can get all the way down to almost just a little above zero, as long as we only have uh, 10 to the minus two atmospheres of pressure and our water will, will boil. Okay, Alyssa told us that her mic wasn't working. All right, so then let's see here. Here it is, um, carbon dioxide, the kind of the model compound we think of when we think about sublimation going from gas directly to solid as opposed to liquid. And again, when it's time for Halloween, when you decide to go get your big block of, of carbon dioxide that you're going to be putting into a, a little bit of water, right? And you're going to watch the water bubble, right? Because as the gas, uh, as the solid carbon dioxide sublimes to carbon dioxide gas, then you, those bubbles will appear um, and it'll look like a witch's brew or something like that, right? Lots of fun. Now, um, let's say you're going to have a party, but it's at elevated temperature, elevated uh, pressures, elevated pressures, right? So, you know, on a different planet, that sort of thing. Uh, what's the highest temperature we could get at? Uh, and high highest temperature and pressure and still observe sublimation. Robert, can you see that? What's our highest temperature and pressure we can be at and still be observe sublimation? So it'd be where the um, triple point is at the um, negative 56.4. 
All right. So negative 56.4 degrees Celsius. And, and then at, at the 5.11 ATMs. At the 5.11 ATMs. Correct. Very good. So if we did want to see a liquid form of carbon dioxide, we would have to, first of all, increase the pressure significantly. 10 ATMs, right? That's beyond our stage of, of being able to survive, right? Um, but we'd have to increase the pressure significantly. And also our temperature, after we increased the, the um, pressure, if we wanted to watch that transition from solid to liquid, our temperature would have to be initially rather low, right? To see that transition from solid to liquid. But then we could get liquid carbon dioxide. Liquid carbon dioxide, by the way, is kind of an interesting um, chemical because it can, if you have liquid carbon dioxide, it can dissolve a lot of um, compounds that are very hydrophobic, right? That require or rely on um, London dispersion forces only as their intermolecular forces. And supercritical, they call it, uh, carbon dioxide is, is a nice condition for performing some chemical reactions. And it was quite popular um, back in the early 2000s. And there's still some people that are pursuing it as far as research. All right, well, um, I'm trying to find different sections that I can kind of cut and 